Hello everyone and welcome to our channel. My name is George Jakes, co-author alongside Dr. Aziz Dreeman of the new book, A Practical Field Handbook in Industrial Radiography. Today we'll be discussing the table of contents in relation to the material that's within all nine sections of the book. Hello everyone and right now I'm going to walk you guys through the table of contents to address the material of the book. So basically the book was written in nine sections and each section is broken down into units. So I want to kind of give you guys a feel of what's in the book and to provide some of the material that you can um, possibly see what interests you guys within the book itself. So right now we're going to go to section one. So I'm in the table of contents and section one is broken down into three units. So in unit one is more of the theory portion of industrial radiography. So what we have is information on each topic here, what I'm going to talk about is what is industrial radiography, the limitations of industrial radiography, alpha and beta particles, gamma rays, radiation decay, x-radiation, x-ray tube, high energy x-ray units, ionization, and radiation energy hardness. So this unit, unit one, that's all based on industrial radiography the theoretical portion, a good portion of it. So when we go into unit two, we're now going into the radiography definitions, terminologies, and equations. So a lot of, of the equation parts of it. So we have activity, we have Becquerel and Curie, we have electron volt, inverse square law, linear attenuation coefficient, half value layer, half life, geometric unsharpness, penumbra, factors of radiographic equivalency, units of industrial radiography. From there, we're, we're now going into unit three. This, this unit is the, the math portion, which is broken down into uh, your regular math, and then we get into more advanced math for like level three stuff. And the good thing about this unit is, I also show you how to do the math. The math is done for you. So the questions are there, and the math is provided and it basically shows you how to do it. So <clears throat> what we have is unit three, mathematical applications in industrial radiography. So we start out with mathematical equations. There's so many, there's about 20 equations there. Uh, applications of mathematics in industrial radiography. And then we get into advanced mathematics in industrial radiography. Like I said, all these, all this information the equations are there, but also the math is provided as well. So that concludes unit one, or in section one, or sorry, section one. So now we're going into section two, which is radiation safety. So section two is broken down into two units. So unit four, radiation safety and regulations. So when we get into unit four, we're talking the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission and the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the NRC. And we get to talk about the low as reasonably achievable, the ALARA principle. Uh, we have work area is an exclusion zone for non-radiation workers. We're talking about um, the radiation protecting, protection regulations of Canada, the radiation protection regulation of the USA, radiation and human cell interaction, the effects of radiation, acute and chronic exposure. In addition, we have radiation monitoring equipment and emergency and other safety equipment. So from there, we're going into unit five, industrial field radiography. So a lot of this is, the good thing about this unit is, is it talks more on the practical side, on the safety, on what happens in emergencies and situations, stuff that other texts usually don't address. So from here we have planning for industrial field radiography, preliminary radiation safety performance checks, setting up a controlled area, radiograph, radiographer dose monitoring, investigation of dose incidents, radiation emergency, minimizing radiation emergencies, and requirements for radiation source storage facility. So that concludes section two, and from there, guys, we're going down into section three, 
radiographic viewing. So this here, you'll find a lot of theory in this section. It's quite a large section in itself, but a lot of important material here for viewing, especially IQI selection and, uh, and radiographic film. So I'm going to now go into Unit 6, which is titled Radiographic Film Properties. So we have radiographic film, characteristics and properties of films, film character curves, radiographic film density, film latitude, film speed, film characteristic table, AGFA film types in comparison with other brands, pipe film class comparison and recommendation, signal to noise ratio of films, film packaging types, intensifying screens, storage of unexposed films. Bit of material there, but we addressed it all. It's best, we, best that uh, that's there. So unit seven, radiographic image quality. So another great unit on IQI. So a very important topic here, guys. So image quality indicators, controlling radiographic image quality, controlling scattered radiation, selection of IQIs, placement of IQIs, other quality indicators, sensitivity improvement, example calculus for equivalent sensitivity. Like I addressed before, this is an international book. So we focused on all different forms of IQIs from your ASME to your, uh, your ISO to your DIN and also into the AFNOR IQI, which a lot of you probably don't know. But it's an international book, so we had to address multiple forms of IQIs. And within that unit there, you'll gra gather all kinds of detail and information regarding the topic of IQI. So now we're going into unit eight. Radiographic film development, teaching you how to develop film. So, radiographic film handling, dark room organization, radiographic film loading, film flashing, chemical processing, manual developing process, film drawing, measuring film density, automatic processing, recommending film processing, and common development failures. Why do we have failure in the dark room? Unit 9, Radiographic Film Quality. So in this unit, we're talking about importance of quality, quality versus production, quality control, quality audits, suggestive corrections. So another very important unit, especially today's day with all the audits and, and what to look for in quality. Very important stuff, guys. So section Unit 10. Field equipment and accessories, your material and your equipment, industrial radiography, application and applicators, number belt, clock tape or location markers, how to build them, basically we we're talking here, cassette and lead size, dark rooms, safety equipment, emergency equipment, all dressed in unit 10. So that, that finishes section 3, we're now addressing section 4, industrial radiography application techniques, a big section guys. Unit 11, industrial radiography exposure techniques. Double wall exposure, single wall viewing. Single wall exposure, single wall viewing. Single wall exposure, single wall panoramic viewing. Double wall exposure, double wall viewing. Double wall exposure, double wall ellipse viewing. Miscellaneous exposure techniques. Weld density and thickness relationship. Weld root exposure heavy castings, on-stream pipe wall magnification, in-service inspection, product equivalent of a steel when you have liquid or whatever in pipes, determining defect depth, radiograph and radiation source placement relationship, and digital radiography techniques. There's a lot of techniques in that in itself. So this, this unit here, you'll find, I think, that, I think honestly there's like 38 39 figures or something in that unit itself. Massive unit with uh, all kinds of great figures to illustrate of the different techniques. So from there we're going into unit 12, film setup and application. How we set up. Film exposure setup, weld increments, radiographic identification, exposure time calculation, development exposure chart, 
exposure factors, exposure corrections, exposure setup applications. I want to mention their weld increments. So what I did was I broke down each size of pipe from uh, I don't two inch all the way up to to thirty six inch or whatever, and I created a table and I, for all different thicknesses from standard up to one sixty double extra heavy on what your increment should be for and how many exposures uh, for both inches and in centimeters. So there's two tables on that. So from there we will head into unit 13 geometric on sharpness and magnification. So we're addressing in unit 13 geometric on sharpness, improving geometric on sharpness, geometric principles, geometric magnification, light X and gamma ray characteristics, and geometric on sharpness with ASME limits. It's unit 14 now, we're talking about scattered radiation and decay. We go into an address scattered radiation, lead screens, detection and analysis of backscatter. Then unit 15, failed film exposures. Very important points um, that you can use in the field. Common causes for failed exposures. Limiting dark, shoot, dark room reshoots. Limiting reshots for exposure device operators. X-ray operating window when we're operating in the field and we have an x-ray window basically we're talking about uh, some importance there we all know we have x-ray windows in this field section five radiographic evaluation interpretation and reporting another large section one of the largest <clears throat> now we're getting into the uh, the interpretation part of it all so, Unit 16, General, Radiographic Identifications, Codes and Standards, Radiographic Interpretation and Reporting, General Reporting, Evaluation and Interpretation, Radiographic Viewing, Radiographic Technique Evaluation, Marking Repairs, Reporting False Indications, Reporting Calculations for Object to Film Distance and Source to Object to Distance. I'll show you how to calculate for Object to Film, Source to Object, and also Source to Film Distance. Then we have Unit 17, Radiographic Film Artifacts. So we're addressing here Radiographic Film Artifacts, Film Artifact Example Radiographs, Automatic Processing Film Artifacts. Unit 18, Welding Radiography, Common Welding Discontinuities, Welding Discontinuities Illustrations. So right here, guys, that's a very important for your interpretation aspect, we address each welding discontinuity in itself. We're addressing the, um, we'll provide radiographs and illustrations of the different discontinuities. Very important unit. Unit 19 now, pretty much the same, but we're addressing forging and casting radiography. So we have forging, forging discontinuities. Casting, casting discontinuities, casting interpretations. So we have radiographs in here on forgings and castings, all kinds. So we're now addressing section six, industrial radiography code standards and procedures. So we're now going into the codes. Unit 20 will be ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Various ASME code acceptance criteria rounded and linear indications, ASME rounded indication criteria, density requirements, ASME B313 normal fluid service, welds greater than quarter inch or six millimeters, ASME unit discrepancies, field work, practical questions, general, ASME B313 normal interpretation evaluation practices, ASME B313 severe cyclic interpretation evaluation practices. ASME code inquiries and interpretation. Unit 21, ASME placement of IQIs and location markers. So uh, we to tell you where to put the IQI, what's good and what's not. So within this unit, ASME code selection and placement of IQIs. ASME I placement for four inch OD pipe. ASME I placement for a six inch OD pipe. ASME I placement for a 24 inch OT pipe to film exposure. ASME placement of location markers, location marker mapping. 
So Unit 22 will now address CSA, Canadian Standards Association. Within this unit, we are addressing CSA Z662 Code Evaluation and Acceptance Criteria. CSA Z662 Density Requirements. CSA Z662 Practical Code Questions. So there's various code questions, examples there that I get you guys to, to go through. CSA Z662 Fieldwork Practical Questions, another practical portion. CSA W59 Welded Steel Construction. CSA W59 Density Requirements. CSA W59 Image Quality Indicators. CSA W59 Image Quality Indicator IQI Placement. And as well, CSA W59 Code Evaluation and Tolerances. Unit 23, CSA Z62 Placement of IQIs. So now the placement for IQIs for CSA. CSA Z662 Code Selection and Placement of IQIs. CSA Z662 IQI Placement for a 4-inch OD pipe. CSA Z662 IQI Placement for a 6-inch OD pipe. CSA Z662 Placement IQI placement for a 24 inch outside diameter two film exposure. CSA Z662 IQI selection. Unit 24, we're addressing API, the American Petroleum Institute. API 1104, selection of IQIs. API 1104, placement of IQIs. API 1104, film density. API 1104, discontinuities and acceptance criteria. 25 additional standards and norms. So we go over the ASTM International and then we're going over the European norms. Section 7, a lot of level 3 stuff here, guys. Industrial radiography and pro 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 professional certification. So we're going into the, the certification scheme and uh, some procedure development stuff in the other units. So. So in Unit 26, we talk more on the professional certification in industrial radiography. Industrial radiography certification, the certification process, the recertification process, the Level 3 certification in industrial radiography, suggestions for competency and skills improvement, recertification through reexamination. Unit 27. Sample certifica certification questions, Level 1 and 2. There is sample theoretical questions for level one and two in this section. And, and there's a couple hundred questions alone in that, in that section itself. So unit 28, we have like 100 level three questions and 10 certification questions. So within this unit 28, sample certification questions, level three. So sample certification questions, level three. Sample certification code questions. Unit 29, industrial radiography examples. So in this unit, we're addressing a bunch of radiographs, examples, and the interpretation that goes along with it. Film artifacts, casting radiographs, welding radiographs, uncommon concepts in industrial radiography, all in unit 29. 30 guys development and inspection procedure is in a procedure um, portion here that if you're looking to get into level three, you're looking to improve your knowledge, uh, you have goals to gain your certifications, uh, right here shows you how to write a procedure. So industrial radiography procedure development, industrial radiography procedure example, example, con example procedure, table of contents. So within it, you're going to have the introduction, you're going to have the scope the references, the personal qualifications, the safety, radiation safety and monitoring equipment, surface preparation, equipment and material, equipment calibration, radiographic testing example technique, essential parameters, acceptance criteria, disposition, documentation and reporting, appendix and inspection report template, all required for a procedure. So now we're going down to section eight, advancements in industrial radiography. Lots of advancements over the last decade in radiography and further 
further new advancements are currently in the works. So unit 31, digital and computed radiography. Digital radiography, pros and cons of digital radiography, computer radiography, advantages of computer radiography, digital and computer radiography comparison, conventional radiography compared with digital and computer radiography, field applications, digital information radiography, computer radiography applications. So unit 32, now we're getting into our industrial radiography with selenium 75. Properties of selenium 75. Selenium 75 energy information. Section unit 33. Small controlled area radiography, SCAR. Uh, great technology, I just worked on a project with it there. <clears throat> SCAR 959M, Baby SCAR 989. SCAR Pro, and we have the summary. Unit 34, real-time radiography, RTR. We have applications of RTR, advantages of real-time radiography, disadvantage, disadvantages of real-time radiography. Unit 35, field radiography pipeline crawlers for the pipeliners. Principles of X-ray field radiography pipeline crawler. X-ray position control devices, pipeline X-ray crawlers, advantages and disadvantages. Now section nine, section nine dependencies. So guys, this is broken down now into four appendices, A, B, C, and D. Uh, my favorite is this, is actually, is this appendix A here, which will provide uh, a lot of material for your field use. They're very important in itself is this right here, Appendix A. Um, you can use this in your day-to-day. -day. This, this unit here probably cost me uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, I believe in a thousand hours to do uh, creating the IQI table. So I had to go through them. I went through them like four times just to, to make sure that everything's correct. But a uh, lot, of, lot of time went through it. So within Appendix A, we have sensitivity and reinforcement charts for field use. So these are what you're going to use in the field. ASME B313 sensitivity tables. ASME B311 sensitivity tables. ASME Section 1 sensitivity tables. ASME Section 3 sensitivity tables. ASME Section 8 sensitivity tables. CSA Z662 sensitivity tables. ASME, sensitive, ASME Section 5 density tolerances. That's your minus 15 to plus 30 percent. I calculated it all out for all the different densities. Um, IQI reference, reinforcement reference, all your reinforcement charts. IQI references from ASME section 3, tables from different sections for ready references, multiple tables there from different that you will need to know that are already in one section, composed of in one, one spot. So. Very important information. You see those IQI tables will have what IQI you will use for whatever size pipe, uh, from half inch up to 36 inch, I believe, and uh, all the different thicknesses, standard uh, to double extra heavy, and uh, your object to film, source to object distance are all calculated for all of them, and your reinforcements are all in, the, all in that table, those tables. So Appendix B. Another good, excellent, one of my favorite uh, portions here. Industrial radiography, additional techniques. So all different techniques. So in this tech, in this we tell you, we show you how RTFI show you how to um, to provide the radiographic technique for all these different exposures. So in some very important uh, joints here that you'll need to know or should need to know for. In, in, in some sense. Inspection technique for nozzle welds, inspection of backing plate or annual ring, radiographic inspection of valve bevel ends, radiographic inspection of valve body, inspection of valve body, inspection of production casting, radiographic inspection of concrete, radiographic inspection of light casting, radiographic inspection of T well joints, radiographic inspection of Y lateral well joints, Radiographic inspection of three-way lateral weld joints. Radiographic inspection of K-weld joints. 
fill-out weld inspection with no internal source placement access and the radiography of spheres. So you got your K, your Y, and your T in there. Those ones there are very important to know how to shoot. So we go now. Appendix C. Answers to questions from different sections. So within different sections we have multiple areas where we have little tests and quizzes. So in section 6, unit 20, we have section 6, unit 22, section 7, unit 27, seven, section 7, unit 28. So appendix D now, your last portion, is the glossary of terminology, definitions, and equations. So basically that's your appendix and your the whole portion of the book that we wrote and I wanted to provide you with some information so you know exactly what's in there now. If you read all that and watch this video, you'll know that uh, that's, what, that's the meat and the potatoes of the book. Well, folks, this wraps up our topic for today. Until next time, work safe, expand your knowledge to increase reliability of inspection. Thank you.